Hey guys, happy Friday. Hope everybody is doing well out there today. You know, I've been doing these uh, these tutorial videos as far as Docker and that sort of thing is concerned for almost a year now. And now that we've switched to a kind of a new series where we're talking about, I mean, still Docker and applications, but now we're doing a device specific uh, series here. I've got a chance to fix something uh, that I really screwed up in the, the last series. And that is uh, getting backups set up early. That was one of the things where I really missed the mark and should have done backups very, very early on. Uh, but unfortunately I didn't. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that today. We're gonna set up backups on our server to make sure that as we're installing more applications and putting our data on the server, that sort of thing, that it's being backed up proactively rather than uh, way down the road when a mistake may have already happened. So today we're gonna to take a look at Duplicati. Uh, we've looked at this recently uh, over on the x86 series. Uh, today we're gonna to take a look at Duplicati on the Raspberry Pi. So let's jump over to my desktop and uh, kind of take a look at what it's gonna to take to get this set up properly. So here we are on my desktop and uh, we're obviously here we're on Portainer, but uh, we actually need to go and kind of take a step back here and actually jump over to Open Media Vault um, because we've got to we, we're going to kind of think ahead as far as what we want to do uh, with our server in the future. And I know that uh, I'm going to have to create a couple of additional folders on my server uh, to make sure that everything is up and running the way I want it to be. So uh, let's jump over to uh, shared folders here. And here in one of my previous videos, uh, we set up a config folder for all of the applications that we're gonna run. All of their configuration stuff will go in that folder. Um, so what we need to do is actually kind of think ahead and think about the other applications we're gonna want and the assets that they're gonna need in order to run properly. And one of the things that, that a lot of applications will need will be a database. So uh, let's go ahead and set up a database folder here. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and click on add. Uh, we're going to call those databases, uh, databases, and uh, then we'll select our drive. This is our big two terabyte drive here. Uh, we're going to say that uh, everybody can read and write that, and we'll click save. And because we're going to be doing backups, um, we're going to need a backup folder. Now, uh, in my previous video, when I did a, when I talked about Duplicati, uh, I mentioned that we don't want to uh, put our backups on our main drive, but we're on a Raspberry Pi here. We don't have a lot of extra ports to use, that sort of thing. So what we're going to do is actually set up a backup uh, folder on here that uh, will store all of the data on, but then uh, basically as soon as that's done, we're going to back it up remotely uh, so that just in case something does go wrong, uh, we'll have that remote backup as well. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a backup folder here. I'm going to call it backups. And again, we're going to put this right here. And again, we're going to say everybody can read and write this. Now, again, putting all your backups on your drive on, on the same drive isn't a great idea. Uh, if you had an additional drive, that would be the way to go. Uh, but as it currently stands with the setup that I've got, I'm already drawing a lot of power off of the USB ports. Um, so adding an additional USB drive uh, isn't really much of an option for me at this point. Um, I could probably power it off of the USB port, but or off of the U powered USB hub that I've got. Um, but I just, I don't have that extra drive set up right now. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and put the backup folder right here. But again, we're gonna offload it basically immediately once the backup is done. So, uh, well, so, we've got, yeah, so we've got this set up the way we want it to have it set up. So we'll go ahead and click save here. And I really can't think of anything else that we would need to back up uh, at this point. So uh, what we'll do is we'll come over here to um, SMB CIFS. We're gonna go over here to shares and we're gonna add these uh, two shares uh, for backups. Uh, we're gonna say public is only guests. And then we'll do this one more time uh, for the database folder that we just created. And we're gonna say only guests there as well. And we'll click save. And then we can come up here and click apply. And then we'll say yes. Okay, so now that we've got our three folders uh, set up here for the configurations, uh, the databases and the backups, uh, now we can actually, uh, let's jump back up here to shared folders. Uh, just so that we can have this absolute path here. Now, if you don't see absolute path, all you're gonna have to do is come up to one of these other uh, columns, go to the column header, uh, come down here, and then you can toggle absolute path on and off. And we want this on uh, for the sake of what we're gonna do right now. So what we'll do is we'll jump over to Portainer. We're gonna go to Stacks. <clears throat> and here you can see I've already got Duplicati in here. Um, and we're go we'll go ahead and take a look at this editor here. Uh, I will have a link, or I will have uh, yeah, a link to this in the description down below. So don't worry about trying to uh, grab all this right now. Just grab it from the link in the description down below. 
Um, and so basically we've got uh, Duplicati, this is gonna be version 2.1, services Duplicati, image, we're gonna use a Linux server image here. The container name is gonna be Duplicati. Uh, the PUID and PGID, those are things that you will need to get. Uh, it's actually super important that you get these right uh, when you're dealing with Duplicati. Now, uh, the way you're gonna get this number right here is uh, you're gonna open up uh, PuTTY or whatever uh, SSH program you like. Uh, I'm just going to uh, do this and uh, get logged in here. <clears throat> now, um, basically what we need to do is get to the ID of the admin account for Open Media Vault. So uh, whatever your username is when you log into Open Media Vault is what we need to type in here. So what we'll do is we'll say ID and we're gonna type in our username. For me, it's admin. For you, it's probably admin. Uh, so we'll just do that. And here we can see my UID is 998, my GID is 100. Uh, so that's where I got these two numbers right here. Uh, time zone is, uh, for me, it's uh, Denver. So we'll go ahead and use that. Uh, so we've got three things here that we're gonna take a look at. The first is the configuration folder. Uh, this is the configuration folder for Duplicati. Um, <clears throat> so what we've done is we've got uh, this right here. We've got SRV dev disk by label files config. Um, and that's what we've got right here. And then we've just tacked on Duplicati to that uh, because we're gonna put Duplicati in its own folder in that config folder. So that's where that comes from. Uh, <clears throat> same thing for uh, backups. Uh, we've got that right here. That is the absolute path for backups. And then same thing for config. So basically this, this source right here, uh, we could actually call this um, uh, yeah, config uh, backup. Let's just do that instead, that makes more sense. And then we're gonna do this actually one more time, oops. Um, and we're gonna go over here to, and we're gonna call this databases. And we'll do this, database backup. And then once we've got that all set up, all we've gotta do is click deploy the stack. <clears throat> so I already had the image downloaded, so it went very fast for me, but uh, you may not have that, so it may have taken a little longer. Uh, we can jump into here. Take a look, services.d equals done. We're good to go and we can jump over to Duplicati and start setting up our backups. Okay, so let's, now that we've got this services.d, uh, let's come back over here and let's go over to port 8200. <clears throat> and the first thing it's gonna say is, or ask you is, uh, are you gonna be the only user here? <clears throat> uh, I, I'm just gonna say me, that's fine. And what we're gonna do is add a backup. Uh, we're gonna create a new backup. I'm gonna say next. Uh, we're gonna call this uh, backup. And uh, you can put a description in there if you want to. Uh, I highly encourage encryption if you're gonna move this off site, uh, just because it's your personal data and you should probably encrypt it. Uh, I'm not going to though, uh, just for the sake of the, uh, simplicity for the video. Uh, click next. <clears throat> now the first thing we're gonna do is figure out where, where are our files going. And, and we said we're gonna put that in the backups folder right here. So we're gonna go ahead and test that connection. Should work just fine. Uh, once we've got that, uh, we can then uh, click next. And then we'll open up computer. And right here are the two uh, folders that we said, we said config backup and database backup. That's why I specifically named them that way. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're just backups here. I probably should have named that something with a capital letter too. Um, and, but th this way it'd be just easier to find. So, um, so config backup and database backup is what we wanted to uh, back up. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, we're gonna pick days to do this. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say, uh, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, and Saturday, we're going to run backups at 1 a.m. Uh, there's a real good chance I'm gonna be asleep, so I won't be messing with the server basically at all at that point. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and say next. Uh, these settings are just fine, and we'll click save. So now we've actually got our backups set up, and what we can do if we want to is click run now. And it's done. So, and that's just because we've only got Duplicati in there for right now. Uh, what we can actually do here to see that <clears throat> is uh, come over here and do backslash backslash hal. Uh, right here is our backups. And right there is the backup we just created. Uh, it is currently 7.30 in the morning, 7.34 roughly. Uh, you can see these were created at 7.33. So there's our backup for, uh, for what we've got set up there. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. Now, of course, like I said, we wanna move this off site. So. Uh, what I'm gonna do is create a new backup and I'm gonna say next, uh, I'm gonna call this uh, remote backup. Now this is actually where you really should do the uh, the encryption if you're gonna move it off site. Uh, again, I'm gonna skip that, but I highly encourage you to do the encryption. 
Uh, and so click next. Our destination, this time we're gonna change this. Uh, and you can select from just about anywhere you wanna select from. Uh, I'm gonna select Google Drive though. And uh, path on server, uh, I'm gonna call this uh, HAL Backup. And I'm gonna uh, get an, or an authorization ID. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I will select my email address to log into that account. And I'll drag that up so you can see it. And it says allow. So I've got that, I can test the connection. It's gonna say, hey, that folder doesn't exist. Uh, do you want me to create that for you? Uh, so when it gets to that point, we're gonna say yes. There it is, and we'll say yes. <clears throat> so it's testing the connection now. Connection worked, good to go. So we'll go ahead and say next, uh, right here. And uh, the, the uh, folder that we want to back up, or that we want to, yeah, the folder we wanna back up is actually this one right here, the backups folder. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and say next right there. And uh, we're gonna, again, we're gonna do uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Uh, but for right now, I'm gonna say like 4 a.m. Uh, just because you saw how fast that backup went. Uh, but that should give us time to let the backups run for multiple applications uh, without any issues. Three hours should be good. If not, you can always come back and uh, change this without any issues. So uh, we're gonna say Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 4 uh, a.m. like so. And we'll click next. And uh, you can always decide how many backups you wanna keep. In fact, I apologize, I missed that when we were setting up our home or our, our local backups. Uh, you can say, I only wanna keep, uh, uh, you know, like three backups, or I only wanna keep uh, delete backups that are older than, uh, you know, six weeks. Uh, you can be real granular about how you wanna do that. Um, so that actually, let's just do six weeks for me, that's fine, we'll click save. And then, hey, Idiot, do you wanna use encryption? Yes, you do. Uh, I'm not gonna do that, but uh, I'm gonna say yes, continue without encryption, and there we go. <clears throat> so what I'll do now is uh, I'll actually open this up in another window. I'm gonna go to uh, drive.google.com. I just, I gotta navigate through some stuff and some of it's personal. So just give me a second here, drag this back up here. Right here is HAL Backup. You can see it was just created a couple of minutes ago. Uh, so let's go ahead and open that up. And uh, let's actually open these up side by side here. So here's our remote backup. We're gonna go ahead and click on run now. Let's clear that out of there. So waiting for upload to finish, this should happen very, very quickly because, well, it's it's like 15 kilobytes or something. But there you saw uh, that backup just happened. So now we've got our server set up to backup three days a week, uh, both locally and remotely. So there's how to set up Duplicati on your Raspberry Pi uh, to, to both have local and remote backups. Uh, Duplicati is really, really cool in the way it works. Um, I, I already made another video showing how to restore backups uh, th through Duplicati. So I will have that linked in the description down below as well, so you can go over and watch that uh, if you ever need to restore your backups. So uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Really does help out with the algorithm quite a bit. Um, also, I wanna give a big shout out to everybody who made this video possible or this whole series. Um, our Argon One, that they sent over the M.2 uh, Raspberry Pi case. Kanaket sent over the eight gig Raspberry Pi. Um, and Sabrent sent over a two terabyte NVMe drive uh, as well as an enclosure. So uh, thanks to all of them. Also, I wanna give a big shout out to my patrons. Uh, you guys are amazing for helping me out month after month. I really do appreciate you guys as well. Uh, if you guys wanna become a patron, I will have a link to that in the description down below uh, if you wanna support the channel that way. Um, but I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.